guess uh, I guess we can get into the argument that uh, that RH Max had had wanted me to cover. Uh, you know the my opinion of the the hex versus Bitcoin, which one's better? And I'll just start off by saying hex. You know how how old is Bitcoin? Well, it's fourteen years old. Um, how much price appreciation has Bitcoin done? It's done six point nine you know plus million X from uh, from sub penny to sixty nine thousand dollars. How much price action has Hex done? Well, it's done 10,000 X. Uh, you know, when you're investing into something, if you're investing in stocks or you're investing in, you know, say you're investing in Bitcoin. If, if all of the gains were already had, then whatever nominal amount that you're putting into it, you know, might go up, you know, I don't know. If you, if you did Bitcoin, hey, you might get, you know, a one X, right. It might go up another hundred percent or whatever number. Right. But in my opinion, like if you, if you just see even what hex has done recently compared to Bitcoin, uh, I think Bitcoin kind of bottomed around like 15, 16 K, something like that. Um, I know Richard's talked about 11 K and pray, but he also did have the contingency of, you know, some of the other markets with the fed and the printing and, you know, the number might not go as low as he, was thinking of the traditional 85% drop uh, with some other circumstances. Um, so the point that I wanted to say there is is also, you know, as far as Bitcoin goes, the the code that makes Bitcoin what it is, uh, people call it spaghetti code, where it's had two critical vulnerabilities. And what's a critical vulnerability? Well, it's had, you know, two possible inflation bugs. One that got realized, and they had to roll the chain back, or it was fork it from a new block that, you know, render those person's coins useless. And then the second one, I think it was in 2017, roughly, was uh, from a Bitcoin Cash developer, where once again, an inflation bug is literally, it's like being like the Federal Reserve. It's like saying, hey, you know, you can print as much Bitcoin as you want. How many do you want, you know? And that person chose not to, uh, not to take advantage of the bug. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to share the screen on a link that I had as well. And let's see, when was this? This was from sep September 22nd, 2021. You know, this was from a couple of years ago. But uh, let's let's just paste this into the share screen. And hopefully y'all can see uh, what, what has happened, right? As far as the case of Hex versus Bitcoin, it's not, you know, sure I've got a bias, but I can also, you know, present some of the other arguments as well. So, you know, Bitcoin's consensus is proof of work. And, you know, their argument you know, when you say that, hey, proof of work is wasteful, you know, on the environment, electricity, it's wasteful on that. You know, they say, well, okay, you know, 25% of it is, what is it, like uh, renewable energy or it's energy efficient, et cetera. And it's like, okay, well, that's just 25%. What about the other three quarters, the other 75%, you know, that's still doing damage. You know, as far as uh, Ethereum goes, you know, even if you're comparing those two, Ethereum used to be proof of work and they had worked diligently on a consensus change, you know, for proof of stake. Does Bitcoin have a consensus change for a proof of stake? Uh, not to my knowledge, you know. Um, when, when you're comparing things like Hex versus Bitcoin, uh, Hex has three audits. And the actual code itself that makes Hex what it is, uh, is not only modular and linear. Like when you actually look at the code, it's like, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. Um, it's got a lot of logic in it. But the code is locked, right? And it's locked, the key's thrown away. So the code is what it is and it can never be changed. And once again, when I mention audits, Hex has three audits, you know, two security audits and one financial audit. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the screen that I have here. And then, and then we'll finish up the stream uh, shortly because it's crazy how quick the time flies when you haven't streamed in forever. And, uh, you know, once again, we're just not gonna cover everything that I wanted to, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely do another stream Hopefully soon, yeah, like with someone like Axis or I, I love those collaboration streams because, you know, I, I really like doing these solo streams and, you know, informing the audience on my opinions, but it's also fun to collab as well. So, but this is what, so this is, this is my Instagram. Y'all can follow me just, uh, I'm pretty much Ballet Brand everywhere. So once again, this is September 22nd, 2021. Um, Bitcoin.org was hacked. The website has the hex.com website. Uh, sorry. Has the hex.com website ever been hacked? Uh, no, it has not. You know, you have the bitcoin.org.org website that has though. So let's let's zoom this in right quick. 
Let's make sure the girlfriend locks the door. <laughs> Always got to make sure the security is on point. Anyway, so this is a uh, this is a screenshot. And uh, one second here, let's just zoom in. So you can kind of see right here where I'm like, you know, circling the cursor. Uh, that was Bitcoin.org. And here's here's what this says. Now, you know, just like survival of the fittest for for people that actually believe this BS that you can give them, you know, one hex or one Ethereum or one Bitcoin and get two back. <sighs> Is is the next you know it's it's another definition of stupidity. But the point is this: so the Bitcoin.org website says, at the time, uh, it says the Bitcoin Foundation is giving back to the community. We want to support our users who have helped us along the years. Send Bitcoin to this address, and we will double the amount in return. Once again, this is kind of like a Darwin Award for stupidity. But the point is, is the Hex.com website has never had, has never ever had that kind of vulnerability. You know, and Richard actually went live. Uh, you know, did Satoshi go live? You know, when, when you're comparing Hex versus Bitcoin, you know, I know some people are like, oh, okay, what's this origin address? You know, uh, is the origin address going to, you know, <laughs> is it going to freaking blow up its own project? Doubtful, doubtful. Um, but, but who is Satoshi? You know, no one knows who Satoshi is. Uh, but we do know that Satoshi has a million Bitcoin, you know. Um, that they had mined, uh, that's like 5% of the supply, you know? So we really don't know as far as, you know, some of these factors, you know, you have Richard Hart, founder of Hex, uh, has, you know, freaking an enormous amount of success in his past and in his history um, and, you know, different calls and stuff. So you have one person that's public and then you have someone that could be dead, you know, uh, whoever Satoshi uh, is or was, or, you know, whatever group or entity it is, uh, you know, clearly they're not public. And so it was really cool to see Richard, you know, once again, this was like, this was like a late night stream because I'm on the West Coast and in the Seattle area. And it was like, I, from what I recall, this once again, it's like a year and a half ago, but I think it was like 1130 my time at night that Richard had done this emergency live stream. And so did you have other Bitcoiners uh, streaming about the Bitcoin.org website being hacked and having a literal scam on it? Not that I saw. I didn't see that from Tone Vase. I didn't see that from some of these other people. Um, so, and then also, once again, like I mentioned, whether it's stocks or whether it's Bitcoin, if Bitcoin's been around for 14 years and it's done 6.9 million X on return, you know, you have to ask yourself like, okay, how much more life is in it? How much more returns are in it? Because regardless of what people say, we're in this for the freaking gains, you know? And I love that, <laughs> that Richard's always mentioned, hey, you know, no BS. Like we're in this for price appreciation. Well, you know, we're also in this for, you know, cypherpunk and change the world and et cetera. But you need gains to be able to do such things, you know? Um, so that's kind of some of my case for it. Uh, let me let me see, because I, I think I did have more as far as the uh, the actual argument of of hex versus Bitcoin, but you know, also like I mentioned as well, for so you have proof of stake versus proof of work. So hex is on Ethereum, and even when hex is on Pulse Chain, it's efficient, right? Uh, so it's not you know uh, destructive or damaging to the environment uh, like Bitcoin is. You know, so that's that's a win within itself for hexagons. Um, and then also as far as yield goes, you know, if if you want to earn Bitcoin. You know what do you have to do? You have to become a miner, okay? But if you if you want to earn more hex, I mean, you can just take the the hex that you have and go to go.hex.com, or you can do uh, app.icosa.pro. You know, you can you can do a wrapped stake, or you can do traditional hex stake. Um, but you can earn, you know, you can earn passive income today um, by you know taking your hex and staking it. And so I really love that. You know, there's there's not a huge barrier to entry. Uh, one thing that you would have to consider, though, is if you're going to, this is something that's kind of changed from the beginning. Uh, you know, at the beginning of Hex, the fees, like I remember, I've got transactions on my main addresses that prove it. Like some of those sends and some of those stakes were like a penny, under a penny, two pennies, you know? And now we've got, you know, I don't know, like I think the most recent stake that I ended was maybe... 50, $60, something like that. So when you are staking hex, this is one thing I will say is with Ethereum, when, when you're doing a stake, um, the Ethereum network pretty much has to prove that you know you were staked for all of those days. And so the longer that you're staked for, if you just stake for one day, the the actual, you know, 
fee and Ethereum that you pay to end that uh, isn't going to be as high as maybe, you know, if you stake for Quattro Cinco, you know, because uh, once again, it's just the amount of computation on the Ethereum network that's required, uh, you know, to, to end that stake. Uh, so that's why we got pull chain coming out. Um, but I said that to say that, you know, when you're a hex staker, it's pretty much equivalent to, to being a Bitcoin miner, um, you know, minus not doing any damage on the environment. Like when I when I see the founder of Richard and I and I just look at some of these other companies, like you look at, you know, Gates with Microsoft or you look at, you know, some of these other big freaking companies that are, you know, dominant, you know, Richard has what it takes as a founder and as a product, you know, as someone that's made products, uh, you know, this does have the possibility of becoming worldwide. And heck, man, we got Hexkins in freaking Africa, you know, how cool is that? Um, so, you know, we're taking over the, the world one hexagon at a time, but it's cool to see the, the leader who is Richard, uh, you know, sticking by our sides and, you know, continuing to, you know, speak truth to power. You know, I really love that. Really cool to have someone that's, you know, been successful in previous businesses, but also understands, you know, it's, it's as RG3 said, you know, you've got the street smarts and the book smarts and, you know, people like Vitalik, you know, they might have an IQ of XYZ, you know, more than, you know, mental level IQ, but then there might be socially, uh, you know, autistic, I guess, you know. Um, but then you have someone like Richard who is on that same boat of Vitalik and some of these other people, Mensa level, you know, he, he's in Mensa, um, but also has the social engagement, also knows what it takes to be a good leader, community, you know, founder, and, and knows how to start a movement. Uh, and that's really what this is. Law of diminishing returns. Thank you. I love me some laws, right? Some some of those kinds of laws. Yeah, law of diminishing returns, totally. You know, and that's also part of it too, as we're kind of wrapping up is, you know, you got some that are like, okay, 10,000 X and hex, good for you guys. You know, what if that never happens again? You know, and that's a good question to ask. And, you know, for the people that, you know, want to see the gains and, and they like what Richard's doing, I mean, Pulse and Pulse X aren't out yet, you know? So when you mention diminishing returns, thank you for that. It's like, <laughs> Those, you know, Pulse, Pulse X haven't launched. So uh, as far as the opportunity there, like the opportunity is just tremendous. Um, and it doesn't mean that there still is an opportunity in Hex because there is. There's freaking, you know, great opportunity there. But it's just awesome that whatever kind of perspective you have and whatever outlook that you're doing, uh, you know, we, we got what you need. Mike Roth says, Bitcoin started... As one of the only cryptocurrencies, very diluted now. Yeah, exactly. You know, and we have to, you know, we have to thank Bitcoin and, and other, you know, when it comes to movements or, you know, different things in history and cryptography, it's like, yeah, without Bitcoin, we wouldn't have what we have today, you know? So you have to uh, attribute that credit, you know, give the credit where it's due, uh, you know? So, so thanks for Bitcoin for doing that. And, uh, you know, it just turns out that they stopped really innovating and stopped really developing. And so, uh, you know, Richard talks about like anonymity with Bitcoin, you know, can you get anonymity with Bitcoin? You know, most of the people that have, have been, you know, found out and caught. Um, can you get anonymity with Ethereum? You're damn right you can, you know? And so that alone is, is a huge selling point. Uh, Cause once again, you need to be, you know, you, you don't want to be doing one transaction and then all of a sudden everyone can see, you know, all of your, you know, prior uh, spending and, in prior transactions, you know, that's just something that we all have the right to, right? When you're when you're spending, say you're getting a pastry at the local, you know, French bakery, uh, when you when you swipe your, you know, debit or credit card, it's not like they can see how much money you have in your bank or all the other previous transactions go. So privacy definitely is a human right, and it's awesome that Pulse Chain is going to have it, and you know, Ethereum currently has it. We can thank Bitcoin. But we can also wave it bye bye. No loyalty and financial well being. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just like someone was saying, like, uh, brand hammers back. Bear market's over. Like when someone like, you know, and what is it? What is his name? Uh, Trace Mayer, right? I used to really love what he was saying. And then even him, you know, you, you had some of these people that were, you know, devout Bitcoin maximalists. And then all of a sudden, you know, you know, you had you had Richard first, and then and then Trace. Now, you know, he's he's like nowhere to be found. Um, but the point is, is you're right. You know, you have to, this is all technology at the end of the day. And not that I would know, but Bitcoin seems like it's like DSL, you know, and Hex is freaking, 
you know, fiber optic, you know, 10,000 megabits up and down. Uh, it's just a different evolution in technology.